how to rank up fast. Look, we've all been there. Big test is coming up. Deadline is right around the corner and we're not ready. As much as we hoped for the best, whether it was a test in school, whether it was finals coming up, whether it's time for your summer body and your body isn't ready for summertime, whatever you want to call it, we've got less time than we want to cover a lot of ground. How do we get the maximum rank results in the shortest time possible? Well, today, that's exactly the premise we're talking about. Let's say you're currently sitting diamond one, or maybe you're diamond two, or maybe you're champ two, and you have six weeks to climb two ranks. This video is my six step protocol to gain two ranks in six weeks time. Warning, before I share the steps in this video, I want to be very clear from the start, this is a crash diet. Like for example, if it's May 15th and you've got two weeks to get in shape for June 1st, summer camp starts and you got to look sick on the beach or, you know, wh whatever it may be. If you want to get in shape in 14 days, those 14 days are going to they're going to suck. In the same way, these steps that I'm about to share are hard to actually stick to. They are not fun. And near the end of, you know, week four, week five, coming on week six, if you stick to this plan, you may just want to quit Rocket League. With all that being said, if you stick to the program. And if you don't quit, I guarantee it is impossible to not be higher rank at the end of the six weeks if you follow what I'm going to tell you. So that's everything out on the table. You make the decision whether or not you want to hear me out or not. And let's get started. Okay, step number one is to find a teammate. Look, this is the only step in this list that is somewhat enjoyable. And it's also the only step that you absolutely need to do in order. While all these tips that I'll share in a second should help you rank up anywhere from hopefully one to two ranks in the next couple of weeks, if you want to double or triple your results, get somebody that you normally play with and make sure they watch this too. Because while this stuff does work at the end, it's not going to work as well if your teammate is sabotaging you or if you take this and you only use it in solo queue. So for best results, watch this with your duo partner or even better, if you have two teammates, watch this with your three team. If you don't have one and you need to find somebody that's higher rank than you to team with, shameless plug warning, I actually run Rocket League's largest improvement discord. Well, technically I don't run it. A guy named Lazord is head admin and you may know him from running Rocket League free help, which is the second largest free improvement discord. So if you're looking for teammates, either join my discord, which he's now head admining or join his discord, which he founded a few years back. Because last time I'm going to say it, these steps coming up suck, but the suck will suck a lot less if you're sucking with someone. This is a Rocket League video. So once again, if you want to join the Discord and find a teammate, it's completely free. I'll have my Discord for first link in the description below. Otherwise, if you're a more serious player, this is the part of the video where I'm going to give a shameless ad read. So that way I can, you know, continue to order Whole Foods groceries and not have to live off of expired protein shakes and cup noodles like I was in college. Anyway, big thanks to the video sponsor, the Grand Champ Bootcamp. If you don't know, the Grand Champ Bootcamp is the most comprehensive coaching program in Rocket League designed to take gold through champ ranked players, maybe like you watching, up to Grand Champ in 90 days time. New students who enroll in the GCB will take a benchmark test to evaluate their skills and you'll be assigned a private coach based on your unique needs and goals for a truly personalized 12 weeks of training. So if your progress is stalling out or you just want to have to stop relying on YouTube videos and solo queue isn't cutting it anymore, DM the Grand Champ Bootcamp account in my Discord to get more info on how you can enroll. So click the first link down below to learn more. Thanks again to the GCB for sponsoring this video. Step number two, all chat. I'm going to give you two options. Option number one is the good person option. If you want to rank up fast and you don't want to get distracted by your teammates who are telling you to not use these strategies, turn off all chat. If you currently play ranked Rocket League, especially solo queue, and you have chat on, you must have some strong willpower because I, 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 I can't even do that. Take my advice, turn off all chat. The second option that you're allowed to do if you want to rank up fast, I'm going to say it because it works. And I told you what I'm about to tell you is not cool. People will not like you for this. Option number two is become a chat troll. I don't know if you've heard of the pro player called Calm, but he plays for version one. And one thing he's known for, love him or hate him, is his trash talk. Yeah, 
I've luckily been able to meet Com in real life and ask him about why he does it. And a lot of people are surprised when I share that he's actually like a really quiet and nice guy. But people get this image that since he likes to trash talk on stage, that he's doing it because he likes to be mean. No, he does it because it helps him win. Now, of course, your games are not pro level, but you probably know from personal experience how hard it is to focus when somebody in your ranked lobby is hitting you with the what a saves or the take the shots. I can't imagine if you're like diamond one, diamond two, diamond three, champ one, and you try these strategies and people in your lobby are spamming you and telling you to play differently. It's going to be hard for you to not listen to them. So either mute them or just go to the dark side and spam take the shot yourself and what a save when your opponent misses the saves and just be a terrible person just to rank up in an all nine video game i hope you don't do that just turn all chat off but i'm just the messenger here step number three stop training new mechanics a lot of rocket league players think they can have it all at once they think they can improve and rank up at the same time and while i'd love to sit here and like tell you that it's sunshine and rainbows and like yeah you can get better and rank up at the same time unless you're like an absolute newbie or like your beginner for most intermediate and advanced players you cannot both get better and rank up at the same time or at least if you do it's not going to be the fastest fastest improvement. Let me explain. So I don't know if you follow like the gym space or like the YouTube fitness space or anything like that, but since I have a lot of free time, I do. And something that like pro bodybuilders or like people like Chris Bumps that are Mr. Olympia or people who are trying to get in like insane shape do is they have this thing in their training called periodization or cycling. You know, like these guys who are trying to get massive and get on stage and like flex their muscles and look sick so that other guys think they look sick. It's a little weird, but what they do is they go through cycles of bulking and cutting. So they don't just try to get more muscular and less fat at the same time. Instead, they'll enter phases where for, you know, three to six months, they'll be just focused on putting on size. You know, they'll gain a little bit of fat, but the main goal is to build muscle. Then when the competition's coming up, they'll cut. So the goal then is to lose fat and hopefully preserve muscle, just not lose too much muscle. So like in the same way in Rocket League, if you're watching this and you're stalled in your progress, you might want to consider, especially if you have a good amount of hours and you've been playing for a while, you might want to experiment with entering a cycle of just playing to improve. I know this video is how to rank up fast. So like what I'm going to tell you is not going to help you improve. It's just going to help you win games. Instead of just trying to build muscle and maintain our fat, like in real life, you want to train Rocket League like, like a professional athlete trains, which is like going through cycles. So right now, if you're in just a rank up phase, that's totally cool. I'm going to talk to you about how you can rank up in just a second. But if you've been stalled for a while, maybe give some thought to whether or not a cycle would make sense. You know, I'm not saying one or the other is forever, but I hope you get the idea. Give cycling some thought, especially if you're hard stuck, just think about it. Moving on to step number four, five, and six, we're gonna cover only game sense. Step number four, positioning. You're now going to follow two rules for positioning and you have to stick to this play style or it's not going to work. On offense, you are now going to stick to something called the 70-30 rule at all times. If you haven't heard the 70-30 rule, it was actually taught to me by a coach who's one of the most popular coaches in my coaching program. His name's Coach Curtis. And what this rule states, he created it specifically for diamond and champ players, is that when you're playing offense and you're not on the ball, so let's say you're waiting for the center or waiting for a pass, you only want to move 70% of the way to where you think the pass is going to be and no further. So like if the ball's coming center, you don't push up to where the ball's going to be. You push up 70% and then you stop. That way you can continue driving forward. The reason this rule is so important is because the mistake low rank players make is simply pushing up to far. It's so much easier to go forward than it is backwards. So for every inch you creep forward, you're giving up a lot of coverage. For that reason, your play style and decision making is also just easier if you're positioned further back. You're going to have more room to get a pass in front of you. You're going to have more time to read the ball and you're going to find yourself over committing for center balls on offense way less. So stick to the 70-30 rule. Second positioning rule you need to follow. I want you to stick back post at all times. If you don't know what back post is, back post is just the post opposite the side of the ball. If you're below G see, you don't need to just go back post. You need to stick back post. And here's the difference. I'll see a lot of people who say they rotate back post and they, they do. They rotate back post, but they end up creeping past it. One of the big reasons back post is useful is because it allows you access 
to your backboard. So if you just rotate back post and then you move up into the middle of the net, your backboard is just as wide open as if you rotated front post from the start, right? You have no access. So if you're below GC, you need to actually stick back post. Back post means behind the post, not at the post, stick behind the post. It will be so much easier to save the ball. You will get so many more clears. Your clears will be more powerful and just your defense will 10X. Stick back post, trust me on this one. Step number five. Once again, this is not going to be fun and it's no challenging first. If you ever watch Flakes play, he will never challenge first. This is a rule he always says. What this means in game is if you have a teammate that's behind you, you're not allowed to full commit on a challenge. Like if you're approaching a ball in the opponent's corner, right? You're first, you're first man, you're first to the ball. Even if you think you can win the challenge, you're not allowed to full commit and put yourself out of play for a few seconds. The reason is because especially if you're solo queuing, you never want to leave your teammate back alone. What Flakes recommends you do is ideally fake challenge, but if you're super confident that you can win, you single jump challenge. That way, even if you do go for a 50-50, you have time to rotate back and you're not, you know, flying onto the opponent's back wall and taking five seconds to recover back. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. Don't let your teammate determine the outcome of your game because your teammate is at your rank for a reason. And so if you let him control the outcome of your game, on average, 50% of the time they're going to make the save and 50% of the time they're going to let a goal go in and they're going to stay stuck in the same rank. So if you want to have more impact in your games, simply don't full commit as first man. That way you're never leaving your teammate back alone. And in turn, you're never leaving the result of a game up to your teammate. Final step, number six. This step is called peaking. If you want to rank up fast, one of the easiest variables you can manipulate to play better is just all the factors that affect your performance outside of Rocket League. Now, I'm not going to get meta on you here and be your parent and tell you to go touch grass or, you know, exercise. I know these are sensitive topics for the Rocket League community. But what I will say is from the limited talk that I've been able to have with pro players, the best pros out there in Rocket League and the ones who stay good for the longest time, right? So I'm not talking about the people who like, you know, win a major and then you never see them again. I'm talking about like the guys who stay on top four teams for like years. The guys who are best in Rocket League take their performance outside of the game very seriously. It can be as serious as like drinking water and staying hydrated. Like if you ever watch like Gen G play, watch how much that roster drinks water while they play. It's actually kind of scary. Once again, I'm not going to be your parent here and tell you to go touch grass and exercise and drink water and stuff. But what I will say, if you want to give yourself an unfair advantage over the average Rocket League player, it's not that hard. Like the average Rocket League player is like sitting here like hunched over but mouth breathing Doritos here their hands aren't even on the controller when the when the kickoff timer is starting when the game's starting they're like fumbling they're picking up the controller they're playing here they're mouth breathing they've been playing for the last four hours it's also 2 a.m by the way and they barely got any sleep last night so like you want to win drink water sleep seven eight hours a night and right wipe the Cheeto dust off your hands before you play maybe I'm crazy I've already said too much you hate me I'll see you in the next video Later, guys.